Hello and welcome to this webinar on what are France's main wine regions. Um, my name's Ed Wicks. I'm a WSET educator teaching out at the WSET School London. Uh, the WSET, the Wine and Spirit Education Trust, is uh, the world's leading provider of qualifications and courses in wines, spirits uh, and sake. Um, the WSET itself has over 50 years experience now in designing and delivering education to uh, wine professionals and consumers alike. Um, and we can now offer our courses uh, in over 70 countries, 15 languages, through a network of over 800 providers. Um, if you're interested in finding out more uh, and starting your journey with WSET, please visit our website, wsetglobal.com, uh, to find your nearest course provider. Um, just a reminder that this webinar will be recorded and it will be available uh, to you to watch back uh, via our WSET Global Events Hub on uh, YouTube. If I may ask um, anyone who has any questions, please post them in the Q&A box and I will cover as many as possible uh, towards the end of the, uh, of the webinar itself. So France is a wonderful, diverse kind of country with uh, many um, fascinating and uh, exciting regions. Um, very briefly, just wanted to talk a little on the history of grape growing in this country. Um, as it goes back into kind of ancient uh, times, uh, at least two and a half thousand years ago, uh, we saw the introduction of grapes uh, and, and the techniques of grape growing uh, brought through from Greek settlers um, settling across the Mediterranean. Uh, and they settled in the south of France uh, near Marseille, uh, where it is today, and they, they brought all this knowledge uh, to the country. This was further encouraged, spread further inland into what we now know as modern day France by Roman conquest about 2000 or so years ago, and techniques started to develop uh, further from the early Greek settlers. Fast forward a few hundred, another 500 years or so, and grape growing was really uh, developed by monks and religious orders uh, throughout France. And they really started to define wine regions that we might recognize still today uh, and preserve winemaking traditions from the past and develop them further as well. Uh, and some of these regions, like I say, being drawn out now are still recognizable and still sought after today, uh, still producing really fantastic wines. And these regions, this, this knowledge that was in, uh, developed over the last 2000 or so years, really poor, put France to the kind of forefront in terms of quality production. And today, France is the second largest uh, producer of wines um, in the world, um, just trailing slightly behind Italy, the largest producer of wines. But in terms of exports, France is um, exporting the highest uh, amount of uh, wines, the, the highest value of wines, I should say. So is leading the world in terms of quality uh, exports. And these varieties that uh, we've seen kind of develop over the last 2000 years, some which we're going to talk about today, uh, have spread across the world now and are some of the most planted varieties in other countries such as uh, California, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, uh, etc. So here's a map of France and the regions we're going to be talking about this evening. Um, and we can kind of broadly separate France between the kind of northern parts, Burgundy, Loire, Alsace, Champagne, which are much cooler and can produce a different style of wine tending to favor more white wine production uh, with some more lighter styles of reds also being produced. And the south, uh, southern regions of France like Bordeaux, the Rhone Valley in the south of France itself, uh, which are much warmer. And these tend to produce much richer, more full bodied styles, typically red wines uh, being produced with a smaller amount of white wines also being found. 
These regions themselves are larger kind of areas. And within each of these regions, we can find some smaller subregions. Uh, a few of them we'll describe today uh, that are um, known for particularly high quality examples that we'll talk about. So the first two regions uh, in the northern part of the country that I want to talk about actually produce very different styles of wine, uh, Burgundy and Champagne. Um, but there is a common link between these two regions. So they both share the same grape varieties. Um, Burgundy itself, slightly further to the south, uh, is renowned for making single variety wines from Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Single variety wines mean that there isn't blending done typically. And uh, if it's a red wine, it'll be Pinot Noir, and a white wine will be made from Chardonnay. And this is a region that is particularly famed for very high quality wines of a, a exceedingly high caliber in some cases, um, some of the world's most prestigious vineyards. And these were these vineyards that 1,500 years ago were being drawn out and um, highlighted by monks for their particular quality uh, and, and still have this link to the past. Champagne further to the north is, is cooler. Uh, and we're going to see wines which have much higher levels of acidity. And this lends um, these wines to be made into sparkling wines where that refreshing quality is really desirable. And here we'll still see the same two grape varieties, Pinot Noir, a black grape variety. However, we're able to make a white wine from this black grape blended with Chardonnay. Uh, it goes through two separate fermentations in order to get the fizz and the bubbles to make the fabulous style of wine. Uh, that uh, comes from this region. So these grape varieties, uh, the kind of characteristics you can expect. So Chardonnay has high levels of acidity, lots of fruity flavors. We see lots of green fruits, uh, citrus fruits, such as lemon and grapefruit. Um, some stone fruit characteristics, peaches and nectarines, and in some cases in riper styles, even some melon or pineapple. We see in Burgundy a tendency in uh, some locations to have lots of oak maturation. So storing our wine in oak barrels. And this process can help give us some uh, extra dimension of flavor and quality, giving us lots of spicy uh, vanilla kind of characteristics. We don't always oak our Chardonnays. One small subregion of Burgundy known as Chablis is very famous for making unoaked Chardonnays where it's just the fruit characteristic and that high acidity that lends itself to a really refreshing style of wine. Our other grape variety of these regions, Pinot Noir, a black grape variety, typically in Burgundy is going to make wines that have low to medium levels of tannins, but very high levels of acidity. Uh, it has really generous red fruit characteristics such as strawberry, cherries, plums, cranberries. Uh, so really fantastic fruity flavors can be found. Our high quality Pinot Noirs, which are typically found in Burgundy, will uh, often see some oak maturation as well to give extra spicy uh, characteristics uh, to the wines, such as vanilla, cloves, and so on. In Champagne, even though this is a black grape variety, with our grapes, the color pigments that make our wine red and also give us tannins are only really found on the skins of the grapes. So if we're able to separate the skins from the juice before fermenting into a wine, we're still able to get a white wine from this black grape variety and it will be blended with Chardonnay and the Pinot Noir here adds these fruity flavors to the citrus flavors of the Chardonnay for our champagne based sparkling wines. So that's our first two regions. Uh, in similar latitudes in the north of France, uh, Alsace uh, is a region that I'm particularly fond of. Uh, some of my favorite styles of wine come from this location. Um, even though it shares similar latitudes, it's very sheltered. Uh, there is a large range of mountains uh, just to the west of Alsace. Alsace sitting uh, in the far east of the country is protected from this range of mountains from cool, wet winds that come from the west. Uh, and it acts as this kind of barrier, meaning that we have really dry growing conditions. 
and gives us really warm, sunny, dry summers and autumns, giving us a longer period in which we're able to ripen our fruit. And this gives a lot of variety in the styles of wines we can find here. Um, so many great varieties can be found uh, and many styles from these great varieties can also be produced, which really depend on when we harvest. Riesling, my favourite grape variety, is the most planted in Alsace and the most important. And we can see a great variety of wines here, depending on how ripe we get it, ranging from dry to lusciously sweet dessert wines. The grape variety in question, Riesling, as I say, very versatile, is known to have incredibly high levels of acidity, um, really aromatic nature to the grape variety, lots of floral notes. Uh, such as elderflower, really intense citrus aromas, lemon, lime, grapefruit, lots of stone fruits with peaches and nectarines and potentially some tropical fruit flavors as well in the riper examples, giving us like mango and, and pineapple aromas. Um, it is absolutely delicious in my opinion. Our next uh, great growing region that I want to describe is the Loire Valley, which is uh, a very large region, um, but being in the north uh, and parts of France is very cool. Uh, and being large, it obviously has going to be a lot of different grape varieties being grown here. Um, but we have a tendency to see more white wines being produced uh, and predominantly from two grape varieties, Sauvignon Blanc and Chenin Blanc. And Sauvignon Blanc, um, has some really famous regions within the Loire Valley, uh, Sancerre and Puy Fumé, which are found in the furthest eastern part, uh, the furthest uh, area to the right hand side of the map that's marked. Um, that's where Sauvignon Blancs from these regions are found. Chenin Blanc and Sauvignon Blanc is also widely planted uh, in the more central parts of the Loire Valley and produce a big range of styles there. Even though the focus is on white wines, there is um, lots of red wines being produced as well from a range of grape varieties uh, and also uh, a big range of sparkling wines, the cool climate still leading to the kind of characteristics that are desirable in uh, sparkling wines as well. So our grape varieties in the Loire Valley that I want to talk about, Sauvignon Blanc, um, very, very popular um, and it's very high in acidity. Grape variety gives really pronounced uh, fruity aromas, apple, gooseberry, which is a kind of tart kind of green fruit, uh, lemon grapefruit. It can give us some floral notes as well. And it's particularly known for giving really fresh herbaceous aromas such as cut grass, uh, green bell pepper, uh, fresh asparagus that can really add to the very refreshing uh, nature of uh, Sauvignon Blanc wines, um, particularly in this part of the world. Chenin Blanc is another great variety that is incredibly um, versatile, um, especially in the Loire Valley. It tends to have very high levels of acidity and gives us wines that have a really intense apple flavor. Uh, some wines giving really pronounced fresh apples, some wines uh, giving us more kind of cooked stewed apple type aromas. Um, on top of that, we have lots of intense citrus, particularly lime, and we can see lots of stone fruit flavors like peaches and apricots as well. Like Riesling, we can see a range of different sweetness levels from dry wines through to incredibly sweet dessert wines being made from Chenin Blanc. Uh, and it's also the great variety behind the fantastic sparkling wines, which are very uh, important in, um, in the Loire Valley. So one of the main uh, great varieties used for sparkling wines, and they'll be made in the same way as champagnes are um, in the Champagne region. The most important subregion in the Loire Valley for Chenin Blanc is Vouvray, which produces dry, sparkling, um, sweet styles. Uh, so all kind of different styles of Chenin Blanc coming from this fantastic region. Um, very diverse, but always very, very delicious. If we move further south, 
uh, so south of the Loire Valley, and we're going to move uh, towards Bordeaux. Bordeaux is, uh, and, and also with the other regions in the South France, uh, significantly warmer. And this is where we're going to see this shift and this tendency for more red wines and black grape varieties being favoured. Uh, the warmer climates help ripen grape varieties that give us more tannins and, and more colour. Uh, and are not as suited for uh, the more delicate white wines that we see further to the north. Uh, Bordeaux is the second largest region in terms of volumes in France, uh, but is the most important region in producing quality wines and the largest producer of, of um, quality wines in, in France. These will be, the majority of which will be uh, quite full-bodied red wines, which will be blended now between uh, several great varieties, but predominantly Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, white wines are also made, uh, and these will be made from Sauvignon Blanc that we find in the Loire Valley, and from a local grape variety called Semillon, which is blended with Sauvignon Blanc and can give extra richness and body to our Sauvignon Blanc wines. These wines will range from dry um, through to very sweet, a uh, most famous subregion in Bordeaux for sweet white wines made from Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon is Sauterne, uh, which is probably one of the world's most famous sweet wines uh, that you can find. But it is really a focus on red wines and those very important grape varieties. Merlot is our uh, most planted. Um, and in fact, it's the most planted grape variety in France. And that's predominantly due to the fact that it's the most widely planted grape variety in Bordeaux. Um, it has medium levels of acidity, medium levels of tannins. It has abundant red fruits, red plums, strawberries, really fresh and delicious. Uh, but it also has some black fruit flavors, particularly blackberry notes. It's quite generous and fruity in its expressions typically. And these can often be enhanced in quality Merlots with a little bit of oak maturation to give those, uh, those vanilla uh, sweet spice aromas. Its best friend, Merlot's best friend is Cabernet Sauvignon. It has incredibly high levels of acidity and incredibly high levels of tannins. It's predominantly black fruit flavor with uh, a real tendency to give intense black currant aromas, almost like concentrated, um, cassis almost characteristics. It also gives a real fresh herbal and herbaceous note with green bell pepper in particular and, and minty herbal aromas, um, which is actually due to the fact that it is related to Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, so they have this similar kind of characteristic, even though they produce very different styles of wine, they have this kind of common thread between them with this herbaceous herbal note. Cabernet Sauvignon wines will typically be aged in oak barrels to soften some of those intense tannins and give our uh, typical vanilla spicy aromas as well. And a little comment on why we blend in Bordeaux typically is um, we can actually create wines that are more than the sum of their parts a little bit. With Merlot having lower levels of acidity and lower levels of tannins, Cabernet having incredibly high levels of acidity and tannin, we can blend to get exactly the levels we desire for the style of wine we want. And then on top of this, the herbaceous aromas and the black currant aromas can be enhanced with the strawberry and red plum aromas that Merlot brings. So uh, blending these in different proportions can lead to numerous different styles of wine being produced in Bordeaux, even though we're using the same ingredients. Um, so really fantastic uh, part of the world for um, for this this very famous blend. And it's, it's been copied successfully in many other parts of the world as well. The next location uh, I'd like to talk about, um, again, and further to the south, so favouring black grape varieties and red wines, is the Rhone Valley. And the Rhone Valley can be split into... Uh, two regions. The Northern Rhone um, is much further to the north. It's actually only a short way below um, Burgundy, which is above it. Um, so it's going to be much cooler than the Southern Rhone. Uh, and we're going to see 
predominantly single varietal wines produced mostly from Syrah, uh, our black grape variety. And typically the Northern Rhone is a region that produces very high quality wines from this grape variety. There is also um, a really fantastic white grape variety that produces a very distinctive style of wine here known as Viognier, um, which produces very full bodied white wines that are very uh, richly flavored as well. Uh, the Southern Rhone, we're going to see a shift in grape varieties. It is much warmer. We get all the Mediterranean influence, uh, giving us much more warmth and heat, which uh, gives us much riper uh, fruits. And it's going to favor Grenache, which is a black grape variety, which really loves the warmth. Um, and Grenache here will be a grape variety that is often blended, and it will be typically blended with Syrah that we find planted also in the Northern Rhone. We'll see lots of Syrah planted in the Southern Rhone as well. So our grape varieties that we just described, Viognier is a grape variety that's low to, in, at the most, medium levels of acidity. It has incredibly pronounced aromatic flavors, lots of flowers, uh, lots of blossom notes, um, and very intense ripe stone fruits like apricots, peaches, and nectarines. This will often be enhanced in the Northern Rhone with um, barrel aging to give us kind of creamy vanilla type aromas that really enhance these peachy notes in the wine. Our most important subregion in the Northern Rhone for Viognier is Condrieu, uh, which is particularly uh, highly regarded and produces some of the world's best Viognier's. Syrah um, is our black grape variety of the Northern Rhone. It has relatively high levels of acidity. It's medium, but it can border onto high in some cases and um, quite high levels of tannins as well. It has predominantly black fruit flavors and particularly blackberry notes are very pronounced, but black cherry is often also found and black, black plum also. Um, it is particularly known for having a really intense black pepper like aroma, especially in the high quality regions in the Northern Rhone where we find it. Um, in particular, Hermitage is um, a subregion in the Northern Rhone that produces Syrahs that have this very intense peppery nut. Our Syrahs will often be aged in oak barrels to give us those smooth, sweet kind of baking spices as well. If we go to the Southern Rhone, we're going to see it favor Grenache more. Uh, Grenache really loving the hot Mediterranean sun. Grenache has relatively low to medium levels of acidity and relatively low to medium levels of tannins, but it has abundant and rich red fruit characteristics. Lots of strawberry, lots of cherry, lots of plum. And similar to why Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon make such a fantastic pair, Grenache is often blended with Syrah, which is also planted in the Southern Rhone, as the Syrah can add a little bit more acidity and add a little bit more tannin to Grenache-based wines, and adding black fruits and spicy notes uh, to the Grenache can add to the characteristic, and producers can make a range of styles depending on how they wish to blend. The Southern Rhone is much more widely planted than the Northern Rhone and produces wines of a range of qualities from really uh, affordable but really delicious good quality wines uh, to really prestigious outstanding quality wines a sub-region in the southern rhone uh, chateau neuf de pape is particularly famous for grenache syrah and other local black grape varieties making up uh, the exquisite blended wine there the last region we want to talk about is actually the largest region in france in terms of volume uh, and it's the south of France, which we can find pretty much just to the west of the Southern Rhone Valley, stretching down to the Pyrenees and the border of Spain. And this region really enjoys the uh, warm and uh, intense Mediterranean climate that we find here, which is ideal for the production of quite full bodied um, red wines. Now we see really a shift with a, a small number, I suppose, of traditional wines 
made from local grape varieties, which are very similar to the local varieties of the Southern Rhone. Grenache based wines blended with other grape varieties like Syrah and other local varieties. We also see a few traditional white wines uh, ranging from quite high acid, refreshing styles to more full bodied, richer styles. Um, but what's really put the south of France on the map is more modern wines where we're able to get a range of styles that use either the local traditional varieties of Grenache and Syrah, but lots of other French varieties, lots of Merlot, lots of Cabernet Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, etc., uh, which are not local to this part of France, have been planted here and very successful in producing high volumes of uh, inexpensive but very nicely flavoured wines for the export market. So it's like a really modern and very innovative, innovative, sorry, uh, region um, in France. So pretty much everything you find in France, you can almost find in the south of France uh, as well. So that is our very quick uh, wrap up uh, of uh, what I think are some of the most important uh, French uh, wine regions. Um, I will quickly look at the Q&A section. Um, whilst you do that, please remind you to complete your feedback poll, which will be on the screens uh, soon. Um, so why, some fantastic questions straight away, why French grapes turned international and was spread all over the world and not the Italian or Spanish grapes? Um, from Marcus, this is a fantastic question and it really goes back to um, what was in fashion at uh, the time when a lot of these wine industries were being set up. And what was in fashion an awful lot of the time was Burgundy and uh, Bordeaux, as it is still really to this day. So lots of Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot being planted to make wines similar to Bordeaux. Lots of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir as well being planted to make wines similar to Burgundy. Um, that being said, there are an awful lot of Italian and Spanish grape varieties that have been transported um, across the world. Uh, I'll be doing another bite-sized webinar on uh, American um, wines in uh, a few months time. And Zinfandel is uh, one of the most famous uh, Californian grape varieties is actually an Italian grape variety that was being exported. It just happened to be that French grape varieties were more fashionable and uh, and turned into these international ones. Um, that being said, I'm seeing a lot of producers now uh, planting more Spanish and international varieties, um, and you can find some really exciting stuff. Um, Steve and Salisbury, what's the uh, top red grapes in the Loire Valley? It's uh, Cabernet Franc, which is another relative of Cabernet Sauvignon and produces wines that are uh, in this area quite light uh, with lots of red fruits and lots of herbaceous notes. Uh, can we recommend Montrachet or Merceau to ones who regular with Napa Chardonnay? Um, Napa Chardonnay, a bit buttery. Um, so yeah, I, I think Montrachet and Merceau are good recommendations for people who like Napa Valley Chardonnay. They're generally going to have higher levels of acidity than Napa Chardonnays uh, and not quite as buttery, but they can have a nice hazelnutty, uh, slight buttery note to them that, that I think would be an easy recommendation to your Napa Valley Chardonnay uh, friends. Uh, so Jim has asked a question about after a thousand years, um, well, there will need to be an overhaul on what grape varieties that are being grown and harvested made into wine. And do you think that French wine is going to be as relevant as it has been over the years? Uh, and highlighting the fact that other regions are adding new grape varieties. And I think this is maybe due to climate change, I think is where you're going with this question. Um, uh, and concerned about the relevance of other regions like Champagne and Alsace. Uh, global warming and climate change is, is a concern for every region. It's going to affect the kind of traditional uh, grape varieties of all parts of the world, whether they're in Europe or outside of Europe. So it's going to be a big focus um, for grape growers in these areas to adapt. I would never, ever bet against France uh, remaining ultimately one of the most relevant countries in the world. It's 
uh, along with Spain and Italy, produces uh, a, a, a huge amount of wine. It's number one in terms of value by a significant margin. So I don't think it's going to lose relevance anytime soon. But I do think, like every other country, it does need to uh, adapt. Um, Concetta um, has a question. I wondered why you can find wines called Bordeaux outside of Bordeaux. For example, I've had a Bordeaux from California. Um, and again, this I think this links to our first question that I mentioned, where the fashion was to plant varieties of these famous European regions outside of Europe and often would just be labelled as the um, the style of, of, of wine. So you'd see um, Burgundies or Bordeaux being labelled from California or Australia, South Africa, for example. Nowadays, um, these labelling terms are strictly controlled. And if you want to export your wines to Europe, uh, you are not allowed to call them Bordeaux if they're not from Bordeaux. You may still find them in the countries of origin if the producer is not wanting to export. But generally speaking, this is a, a naming kind of convention that is going to be fading out. Um, the wines from Alsace, Elizabeth, great question. Do you know whether the wines from Alsace are sweet or dry? The answer is both. Um, it depends on many different factors, but harvesting, if you harvest early, quite often you see um, dry wines and in um, later harvest, you might see some sweet wines being produced. Uh, in the South France, where they blend Cabernet Franc and Morvedre, what do these add to the blend? These are other great varieties that we find across France. There's about 200 indigenous varieties, so I can't mention all of them. Cabernet Franc gives herbaceous notes um, and some black fruit flavours similar to Cabernet Sauvignon. Morvedre is a very tannic, very acidic grape variety, so it helps add tannins and acidity to our blends and give us lots of black fruit flavours, and it can give us some meaty flavours as well. Um, why does France have a comparative advantage in wine? Uh, it's a country that produces the second largest volume of wine in the world and it sells it for the most amount of money. So um, it's, it's um, partly due to fashion and, and tastes, but I think 100% it's due to the fact that France has such a diverse range of climates and such a rich history of thousands of years of fine wine production to uh, rely on that has given this um, big advantage um, uh, to, to France. Um, do you think the UK Pinot Noir can ever rival Burgundy from Karen? Who knows? I think so. It's not far off now. Um, maybe the uh, it might take a few generations before we rival the best of Burgundy, but I think right now you can find some UK Pinot Noirs that can go toe to toe with the majority of Burgundies. Yeah. Um, cool. I think that's all we really have time for now. Um, I would like to thank everyone again for uh, for your uh, coming to this webinar. Um, like I said, the recording will be emailed to you all uh, tomorrow and will be available on the events hub uh, on YouTube, where you can also catch up on all our previous events. And if you're interested, um, uh, to find out more, sign up for our qualifications on our website, wscdglobal.com. You can find your nearest uh, provider of our courses. Um, thank you so much, and, and I hope you all have um, a good night. <laughs>